Everybody's favourite turtle head, Mouse Kane, is back with a brand new album called One Man Band. This is Mouse Kane's fifth studio album, coming just 18 months after his fourth studio album, Change the Show, which, in my opinion, was some of Miles' best ever work. Change the Show did just that, really, evolving Miles' sound from that straight down the middle indie rock sound that we've all come to know and love him for over the past 20 odd years or so, into, in my opinion at least, a very nostalgic and intricately layered new sound that wears influences from Motown and Northern Soul on its sleeve. It was banger after banger, no it, it actually was, and it was littered with these really rich backing vocals and harmonies provided by Corin Bailey, the singer behind the smash noughties hit Put Your Records On. What a tune that is. Anyway, I digress. Just 18 months after Change the Show, and it sounds as though Miles has decided to do a complete 180 and return to a rawer, hairier, in your face and simpler sound on this record called One Man Band. So what's the verdict? Referring to Miles Kane as Alex Turner's best mate just does not do the guy justice. Miles has proven himself to be a fantastic songwriter in his own right. Miles has written some really, really top tunes over the past years, proving that he's still a force to be reckoned with in the indie sphere, and this album contains even more of them. For me, the singles are exactly what you'd expect from Miles Kane. Troubled Sun is a hard-hitting opener that really sets the tone for the record. Two to three minute, in-your-face, raw, gritty, danceable, and high BPM indie pop tunes was definitely the blueprint here. But there's more to this album that initially meets the eye, or ear, should I say. Miles has been quoted in several recent interviews saying that this album is probably his most reflective yet. And when you start to read the lyrics on this album, you realise that it's actually taking the listener on a journey through some of Miles' deepest insecurities, to put it plainly. And with lyrics like, you said don't worry, I know you're scared of love, and screaming out into the void, it's obvious that this is actually a really sad album about some of Miles's failings in his past relationships maybe. It's that classic Smiths thing of upbeat instrumentals coupled with sad lyrics. The album definitely has a theme and I get the feeling that Miles wanted to get something off his chest on this record. Writing this record sounds like it was therapy in some way for Miles and I think the album is called One Man Band because it's actually about Miles being alone. The Wonder is probably the only exception to this tone on the whole record and it's probably my favourite song on the whole album. Really classy execution and the song just embodies everything I loved about Change the Show and everything I love about Vintage Miles. The song sounds really soulful with those backing vocals and that great bass work from Charlie Salt from Blossoms, whilst being punchy and energetic with that thick guitar riff at the same time. Very very Motown inspired this song. I love it. Baggio is another standout. I love it when songs take you back to a particular time or place and when I hear this song it feels like a vivid childhood memory. Really well executed. Later on in the album, the song Heal also caught me by surprise. Really enjoyed that song too. I think it's really well put together. It has a great hook and those backing vocals again, provided this time by Charlie Salt from Blossoms as well, suits the song perfectly. The Deeper Cuts is, however, where I think this album falls down for me personally. Now, I can't say anything too negative here, to be honest, because Miles lives close by to me, and I've bumped into him a couple of times over the past few years. So, in the off chance that he actually sees this, which is unlikely, but you can't be too careful. Anyways, where was I? Yeah, tracks like Never Taking Me Alive, Doubles, Heartbreak, The New Sensation. For me, are actually all pretty forgettable songs. I just don't think the lyrical content on these songs matches the same calibre that we saw on songs like Baggio and The Wonder. They're kind of so generic that I feel like anyone could have written them, and because of that they don't really manage to deliver much meaning to me as a listener. Take lyrics like, we'll light the city tonight, I'll tell the lies that you like, it doesn't really say much for me. Now I don't want to throw any punches because I am a big fan of Miles and have been for many years, but it's hard not to call these songs filler for me. As a running order, I'm not entirely convinced either because as a listener you kind of get bored before you get to the best tracks like The Wonder and Baggio which are tracks 6 and 7 respectively. Ransom is another song where the lyrics are maybe a bit too on the nose for me. It's a decent song don't get me wrong but on a first listen I didn't get a great deal from it. I don't know maybe I do need more listens and it'll start to grow on me. The album ends with perhaps the saddest song on the whole record. Scared of Love is probably the rawest track on the album. In a recent interview Miles said that that he and producer James Skelly, who is also his cousin and just happens to have produced Blossoms also, decided that they would keep the song as a raw acoustic track. And the song kind of reminds me of the last song on the latest Foos album, Rest, in the sense that both albums
albums end with a stripped down acoustic song that kind of sounds like a raw demo. The big difference for me though is that Rest by the Foo Fighters really goes somewhere. The song starts off as an acoustic ballad and ends huge and Scared of Love kind of stays the same level for the whole song. Nothing new really happens as the song progresses, no additional layers of instrumentation, even subtle ones. I don't know, I feel like more could have been done with this tune, but as a song it's pretty good nonetheless. So, I was reflecting on this point with my partner before. What is the point of making an album for Miles Kane in the year 2023? Just hear me out, hear me out. There are some artists that are renowned for their musicality, their ability to create something truly magical on wax that challenges the listener and takes them to places that they've never been with that particular band or artist before. It's very much about what takes place in the studio. Live is almost secondary, and it's about figuring out how to replicate that studio work for the live show. And the song aren't necessarily written for the live show. Examples like Arctic Monkeys and Radiohead come to mind. And then there are artists that are known for their live show. And when they go into the studio, it's all about how they can make something that will pop off, for lack of a better term, live. And I think Miles is the latter of those two. Miles has always been a performer first, in my view, above anything else. And this album, One Man Band, does exactly what it should do for Miles, in my opinion. It gives him three or four big, fast-paced, in your face songs with big choruses to bring to his live show to enable him to keep things fresh and to enable him to continue to tear it up at festivals and arena shows. So for me, regardless of what you think of the album, I think it meets its objective. So there you go guys, a record that has some fantastic highlights, amongst Miles' best ever work. But those dashes of brilliance are short lived for me. When you listen to the album from start to finish, I don't necessarily think it leaves a lot to be desired, but it does leave you wanting a few more of those tunes like Troubled Sun, Baggio and The Wonder. Having said that, for live shows, I think whatever songs Miles chooses to include from this album in his live show will take on a whole new lease of life. And I think the singles will fit into Miles' set pretty seamlessly very, very quickly if they haven't done already. So with that said, make sure to leave a comment down below letting me know what you think of the album. Would you like to have seen Miles explore more of that Motown type of sound that we saw on Change the Show? Or are you happy that he's returned to his indie rock roots? Let me know. Do hit that like button to show your support, a subscribe to the channel, would be hugely appreciated and if you are interested in watching some more reaction and review content including why I think most people are wrong about Arctic Monkeys Glastonbury performance or if that's not your thing and you want to watch me make a song on an iPad instead then I'll put a few links on screen round about now to a few videos that you might want to watch next. Thank you ever so much for watching and as always I'll see you very soon.